Hey you guys, welcome back to Shared News. Today is a very special day because we have the one, the only, Brandon Mills from Listen to Your Heart for a special interview. Thank you so much for joining us, Brandon. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to this. Of course. And as always, I'm Renee Ariel, and I'm joined by the lovely Fiona Zaring. Hello. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we, before we get into any questions, there is an elephant in the room that we need to talk about, Brandon. And that <laughs> is before you left the show, you were involved in a little bit of a love triangle. Yeah, <laughs> that's what people are calling it. That's yeah, sure. <laughs> we can call that. <laughs> So what we want to know from your perspective, because obviously we only got to see what played out on TV, what they edited in, what happened in your, in your perspective? I got thrown into a room full of beautiful women and was expected to, you know, quote unquote, fall in love in a very short period of time. I was that fast in any type of relationship. And there were a few people that I had a vested interest in um, that I wanted to get to continue to know. Um, and basically I had feelings for both of them, you know, I'm not going to apologize about that. Yeah. I think the way I handled it could have been better, but, um, you know, lessons learned sometimes the hard way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> there was a lot that wasn't shown for sure on the show. I think, you know, if, if we're being honest, it's probably about 5% of what is, what wow. is actually being done and said and seen, uh, or recorded rather is actually seen by the viewer. So you know, I'm, I'm taking this all with grace and compassion for myself and everybody else that's kind of making big assumptions without seeing the full truth. But that's the beauty and the tragedy of reality TV. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Have you talked to either Julia or Savannah since the show wrapped? Both. Yeah, we're, we're all really good friends still. Oh, good. That's great. That's awesome. So after watching it back, is there anything that you would have done differently? I know you said they only show about 5%. Is there anything that you would have changed? Any big moments that you would have gone another way in? Yeah, I think I think the way that I uh, talked to Savannah could have been a lot more elegant and uh, led with love. Um, you know, it's it's ch it's challenging because I, I came back from the date with Julia and and what they didn't show is a few things. One, I don't, I care for Savannah deeply. She's a great woman. I don't think she really was there, like fully present and fully into it the way that I, I wanted in a partner. And so that was something that was a challenge for me. And looking back and watching back, she said more to the camera during the interviews than she ever said to me to my face. So there was a lot of uh, uncertainty there throughout the um, time that I was there with Savannah. Then we go on the date with Julia and uh, we have a really good time. We have a beautiful connection. She says a lot of the right things that help me as a as a person. I'm I'm more of you know, the five languages. I'm much more of a and I felt that strongly with Julia. Uh, but I also let Julia know that hey, I do care for Savannah, so I need to go and have an honest conversation with her, and I need to see if her heart's really in this. And then I came back, and I'm a little fired up because I really want this to work. I want this to go well, uh, but. I, I'm sure nobody could tell, but I wasn't completely sober <laughs> when I came back to the, <laughs> to the house. So I, I kind of, I don't think I, I don't think I came across the way that I wanted to. Um, and that's something I've apologized to Savannah and she's lovingly and gracefully accepted my apology. So yeah, I would have done that a lot different. Um, but again, you're thrown into a circumstance where you don't have a lot of time you're you're emotionally strung out you're you know you have sleep deprivation they're pulling you and pushing you and and feeding you uh information whether it's accurate or not is up to you to decide and decipher so there's a lot going on uh and we were all in the mix and we were all trying to do the best that we could so you know a lesson learned again uh that that one was less learned the hard way <laughs> Um, I would love to know your thoughts on like the philosophy of it all, the wild idea that you throw music and love together and these super solid, beautiful relationships are going to emerge. Would you say after going through this experiment, you're into it, you believe in it, or <laughs> it's a little out there? <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, uh, so for everybody watching that thinks reality TV show is real, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's very, very manipulated. Um, so I will say I was there. I think all of us were there to find love or at least a, a beautiful spark to a, a new relationship. Um, and 
play some music. You know? So sometimes it works. There's a few couples on the show that I think really cared for each other and were able to do that very quickly. It didn't necessarily work that way for me in that situation. I have a question. With the performances, because as you're saying, with reality TV, it's, it can be a bit manipulated. How is it that the judges always know what is going on between these couples? Is it truly <laughs> that on stage it's very clear with body language and the way they're singing together? Or do you think or do you know that they're told something ahead of time? I know that the producers are sliding them some information to get a rise <laughs> and make really good TV out of out of the situation that's at hand, you know? So we were, I was, yeah, that's all. That's probably the best way to say it. Um, the producers know how they want to kind of move this train wreck. <laughs> and so they're kind of... Uh, affording the the judges especially the the bachelor couples they're giving them a lot of information about what's happening uh that they don't know about so yeah that kind of helps drive that emotional response to the viewers and and again it kind of it kind of punked me out a little bit when there were some people that had uh commented on savannah's approach and interaction with me on stage, you know? So yeah, they're really good at what they do. You know, I have no animosity <laughs> towards it. I signed up for it voluntarily, but uh, you know, I didn't know that that was going to happen the way it did. Um, so prior to going on, listen to your heart. Had you seen any of the other shows in the bachelor franchise? I had never seen a bachelor episode in my life. And this is kind of a funny story. I looked up a few clips on YouTube or maybe Hulu. And I saw the drama and, and how the TV show was portrayed and the people were portrayed. And I called the producers back. I'm like, listen, I pre really appreciate the offer. I, I definitely, this is not my style. I can't do this. <laughs> and they, they quickly talked me off the ledge like, no, no, no. This is a brand new show. It's a totally new concept. We're not going to have all the drama. You're going to have a great time. You're really going to enjoy yourself. And uh, you should give it a try. So. I was like, okay, you guys seem like trustworthy people. So I jumped on the show. And again, I, I would have done it again in a heartbeat, but I kind of wish I did my homework in hindsight. I should have uh, kind of seen what I was walking into and maybe would have responded or have a better wherewithal of, of how to how to uh, navigate this, this system. I don't know. It was, uh, it was very humbling, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> now that you've gone through a version of Bachelor Nation. They love to bring people back, throw people on other shows. Is that something that you would be willing to dabble with again? Or do you think you'll focus on like music period moving forward? Yeah, uh, I will definitely be focusing on music. That's always been my number one passion and love uh, in life and, and career. Uh, I would be open to it. I would love, I think everybody loves a good redemption story. And I would, I would love to, uh, <laughs> I will say this, I think I think the casting directors did a fantastic job about bringing some pretty cool people. I'm friends with the majority of the cast after this. That was probably the biggest takeaway from all this. I really care for all these people. They're super talented, they're loving. Uh, they took a big risk with, with me and, and the whole crew. And um, I would be open to do it again. I would be a little more cautious about how I uh, navigate the system, but um, I, I would definitely be willing and open to, to give it another shot, yeah. Speaking of that tight-knit Bachelor Nation family, since the show aired, have you received any messages or DMs from anyone else from <laughs> Bachelor Nation showing support, maybe reaching out, sliding in the DMs? <laughs> <laughs> I've had quite a few interested people, um, some being very kind about it, some some being maybe a little uh, provocative. Um, that's probably the best way to say it. Um, <laughs> I just, I would have to let everybody know I'm definitely willing to like open up conversations and stuff, but I'm not gonna start a relationship through a DM slide. <laughs> Ooh. So you are currently single. I, it depends who's asking. No, I am, I am single, yeah. <laughs> are you open to dating anyone from Bachelor Nation currently? Well, so, I don't know much about Bachelor Nation. Um, I'm open to dating really cool people that are, you know, emotionally mature and uh, have their own career and their own focus. I don't, I'm very, very anti and I've noticed that to be a common thread and trait uh, within not just the Bachelor community, but within our, our culture in general. So that's not something I'm looking forward to. But I'm, I'm totally open to dating someone who 
you know, is intellectual, uh, emotionally intelligent, um, fun. Yeah, I'm definitely open to it. It would have to be the right fit. Um, I'm not rushing into any relationship by any means. Um, but yeah, I'm open to it. Why do you guys do you do you girls have some some ideas that I should be pursuing or at least talking to? I don't know. I will tell you what I've learned from these interviews is that often when anyone from Bachelor Nation says puts it out in the universe that they're hoping to see someone in paradise or hoping someone slides into the DMs, you just never know what will happen. So my question for you is there if you were to go to paradise, which we're rooting for you mm -hmm. here at Shared News, um, is there Thank anyone you in particular that you would like to see in paradise? I would love to hang out with Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> I'll just show you. <laughs> um, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody from previous Bachelor shows, unfortunately. Uh, that's how that's how rookie I am about this whole reality TV show and this whole culture. Uh, so again, I'd be open to uh, open minded, fun, emotionally intelligent, uh, humorous, witty human being. So if you if you girls have suggestions, I'm open to them. But I again, I don't I can't speak intelligently about about who I'd like to see because I just I just never watched the show. Well, we'll have you to catch think that up. one over. <laughs> um, I want to know, moving on from the dating of it all, you are obviously music is such a big part of your life. We got to see a little bit of that on the show. Now that you've had some time away from reality television dating, are there any projects? Are there any things we should be looking out for on the music front? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, I'm constantly writing, constantly recording. Uh, I have got about four singles lined up that are going to be coming out. Uh, the first one, it will drop May 29th, and you can pre-save that on all your uh, streaming platforms, and I'd love to get you guys' support. Uh, May 29th will be um, a song release called Glistening, and it's the song I wrote when I was living in uh, Bethlehem, Israel, or Palestine, you might call it, uh, during the, uh, I, was, I was working for the Palestinian refugee camp, a celibate at the time. I was focusing on my relationship with, with God or creator, whatever you want to call him. And uh, I was just, I wrote this, it just kind of flowed out of me one night. And it's just this idea about like a, a perfect relationship, which is kind of ironic because I'm still looking for one. But uh, I'm, it's a song I'm really proud of. And uh, again, it'll be out on May 29th. Amazing. Awesome. All well, right. Well, we are so it. excited about that. Thank um, you. One more little quick uh, Bachelor question we want to know who do you think is going to win listen to your heart who are you rooting for well i'm not the right person to ask because i'm rooting for everybody uh, i love everybody <laughs> on that show minus like a handful we won't get into that uh, i'm rooting for i i would think the i for me the feeling of the most honest can from a romantic sense which again looking back i didn't know that that was going to be so important um, I didn't do my homework, obviously. Uh, I think Chris and Bree have this really beautiful, intimate, honest connection. I think Trevor and Jamie have a beautiful and honest connection, too. Um, not to say that Matt and Rudy don't. It just doesn't seem to be at the level where uh, Trevor and Jamie and Chris are at the, at the current state. So I'm rooting for everybody. I'm just a big teddy bear. I want everybody to win. <laughs> <laughs> With the last few people... Um, who do you think has the most potential to be a superstar after this? Obviously, they're all super mu musically talented, but who do you think has the most star potential? That is a great question. So I will say this based on my reaction to the performances, like Rudy just melts my heart and gives me chills and gets me all excited hot and bothered every time she sings like she's she's on another <laughs> level and she has a lot of emotional response and connection to her song uh to her singing to her songwriting and to her performance so she kind of moves me in a way that that i don't think any of the other contestants do um i think natasha was really well polished uh i just don't know if i really i really as a as a viewer, as an audience, as a uh, listener, I get moved by authenticity, and I'm not sure if if Natasha sells me on the authenticity. Although I do believe she's a great performer, but all that to say, Rudy's I gotta go with Rudy. She's my girl. I think Bree's pretty damn amazing too. So yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. They got a good I'm cast for everybody again. They did a great job. I'm really impressed. I'm really, really impressed. I, I would love to see the next season be a lot more about the music and a lot less about the drama, but but because there's it's part of the Bachelor franchise, I don't know if we would get that gift as musicians, but 
we'll see. We're just going to go have to do our own thing, I think. You guys want to start well, a reality as show? As a viewer, <laughs> we've loved the singing and the drama. We are here for it all, especially when we're in quarantine. It's been nice. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I've, I've had a good time. It's so funny. The first time I watched the first episode, I was I just miss everybody. I miss everybody. Uh, there's such a good cast. Good, good. So fortunate to them. And I joke around to the to the guys. I'm like, dude, I'll be, I'll ride any of your guys' coattails. Let me open up for you, you know. So, I'm <laughs> excited for the success, the future success of everybody that that got to be a part of this little uh, dysfunctional adventure that we that we were on. <laughs> Well, it was an adventure indeed. But Brandon, thank you so much for joining us for the interview. It was so great talking to You're you. Um, and we'll have to do this again sometime. I'd love to be back on. You girls were great. Thank you so much for taking time. I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And uh, in the meantime, so obviously, if you want to uh, shout out your singles again that are coming out and also where everyone can follow you on social media. Yeah, so... Everything social media wise is Brandon Mills Music. You can visit my website, brandonmillsmusic.com. And then I have a uh, single coming out on May 29th called Glistening. And you can go on to any streaming platform um, and you can pre-save it. And it'll be dropping in two weeks, which is really exciting. And then there'll be a video to follow. So I'd love for you guys to be part of the tribe. And um, I want to share this as a community. I'm not, I'm not in charge of anything. I just want to share with my love in my heart and then um, my music and then I want, I want community so I can go and travel and tell stories and sing songs to people and um, yeah I want to keep this keep this train moving so that's awesome well we look forward to hearing all your music and ask for you guys if you want to give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell and subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our bachelor nation updates and if you guys want to follow me you can check me out at Renee Ariel on all social media and Fiona where can they follow you you can find me on all social media at Fiona Zaring. Wow. All right, you guys. We'll see you next you time. Oh. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. All right.